Hello. Today I'm going to go through the process of top coating a foam core carbon skin grip. Now for more information on how to make these grips, the actual process in forming your cores and skinning your grips, you can find that in Rodmaker magazine. I'll, I'll list those volume and issue numbers in the uh, uh, topic section here. But in the meantime, what we've done, we've got a grip that's been formed, it's been wetted out, and then we've put a second coat of our wetting out epoxy on top of the carbon, which is really nothing more than a sealer. Working with 220 grit sandpaper and then progressing through 320 and finally to 400, we now have a grip which is absolutely smooth. There's no low areas, there's no high areas. It's smooth. We're through to the carbon here and there, uh, not quite in some other places. The important thing is there's no voids, there's no pinholes, there's no low areas. We're sealed and we're ready to progress with putting our final top coat on it. There's certainly any number of top coatings you can use to finish these grips. However, the best, in my opinion, is going to be a water curing urethane. And the two that I prefer and that I highly recommend are going to be the Trondac U40 Permagloss and the Rob Dancer Lumiseal. Uh, these products are not identical, but they are very similar. They cure upon exposure to the moisture in the air. They're extremely hard. They're not going to peel, crack, chip. In fact, it's very difficult to scratch them. It, it, to sand them requires quite a bit of, uh, of effort. They dry absolutely water white clear. They're very, very thin and yet very, very lightweight. They are infinitely superior to any sort of an epoxy for top coating these grips. Now this is going to go very quickly. The product has been sanded through 400 grit. Do not wipe or wash the top with a solvent. Never use a solvent as the last step in your surface preparation. If you want to take a soft bristle brush and knock the dust off, that's fine, but do not wipe the top with a solvent. I have a plastic cup here with uh, some permagloss in it, a gray foam brush. Be careful, some of these brushes will not withstand the solvents that are in the permagloss and the Lumiseal. The gray type tend to be okay, the black ones will melt. Test first. We're going to start the lathe turning here. This is a variable speed lathe. If you've got a belt driven lathe, just set it on your lowest speed. We're going to knock this down to about 200 RPMs. Very important that your brush be fully saturated with finish because once we start, we're not going to stop. This product sets very quickly. Press the brush down into the cup. Compress it so that when you release it, it sucks up as much of that product as we can. Here we go. We're going to touch this in. We're going to touch this in. And now we're going to start. Press it down and we move it about an inch per second across the top of the the grip. Believe it or not, we're finished. That's all we've got to do. Now we're going to let that spin for about three or four minutes, at which point it'll be set and it won't run, sag, or drip, and then we'll come back and take a look at it. This procedure looks simple, and it is, but you don't want to deviate from what you just saw me do. These moisture curing urethanes set very, very quickly. You'll notice I made one pass, moving the brush at about one inch per second. I made sure not to miss any areas, but by the same token, I didn't make a second pass, I didn't reload the brush and go again. A fully saturated brush, one pass, about an inch per second, will give you the results you desire. Don't mess around with it, that's all it takes. If for some reason you come back later after the finish is set and you look at it and you say, well, there's a dry area, I missed a spot, okay, let it set for a few hours. Then go back, put a second application on. But only do that if there's something wrong with the first. These are very durable and tough products. They don't need two coats. One application is enough. Try to get it right the first time. And if you do what you just saw me do, you should get the same results I got. And here's the finished product after spinning for a few minutes. Now this won't be completely set uh, or dry to the touch for probably 30 to 45 minutes and we certainly don't want to use it or attempt to remove it from the mandrel or put it on the rod for uh, 
uh, a day or two at least. And, and really, in, in most parts of the country, assuming humidity is above 50, 60 percent, give it three good days to set up before you put it into use. Here's a better view of the grip after it has been allowed to set for about a day. As you can see, it's absolutely slick, smooth, not slippery, mind you. But the top coat is thin, lightweight, absolutely hard as a rock, will stay absolutely water white clear. It will never yellow or amber, ever. It'll outlast the user. For more information on making the foam core carbon skin grips, which were introduced to the rob building industry by myself and Andy Deere some years ago, consult the volume 10, number 6 issue of Rob Maker magazine. The shrink tube forming technique was covered in volume 11, number 4. The urethane application technique, which we just detailed in this video, can be found in the volume 14, number 4 issue. Give it a try. Good luck.